Ya yeah, hello. Hi YouTube. Welcome on in. We're continuing on. Holy shit though. The more I think about it, the more I'm like, if I was watching this anime in high school, I feel like I would have been like, yo, did like uh, Hachiman's just like me for real, for real. I also want to go ahead and, and, and state this. You know what? Fuck it. I, I'm going to go unhinged for, for a bit. I hate that there's been people out there that have literally been saying, this show is not that deep. It's just all about fucking high school. Every show is all about high school. Look, this show is actually deeper than you think because this show is actually touching on aspects of our hierarchy of needs. This show is legitimately going through and hitting on the aspects of love and belonging seen here and what it takes for a person to actually try and make friendships. This show is understanding the aspects that, hey, our characters are going through trauma. They don't have everything met in their hierarchy of needs and they're trying their fucking best to be able to come together to work through their shit and start, like, you know, bettering their life bettering what's around them and then people are like no it's only one thing anything can be applied to the hierarchy of needs yeah but then you you bring in Jungian archetypes you can start looking into who is Hachiman in general who are these characters in general right what are the things that they present to the outer world versus the things that they present inward if you were to look at this and you were to take Hachiman you would take Yui Yukino you name it and put this out there, you start identifying semblances of self and semblances of other. This show touches on aspects of how does an individual, how does Hachiman's cognitive distortions affect people going out into the macro system and going back in affecting him individually? How does the system of change impact one another? Speaking of systems of change, how does this work? How does the system of change come through? It legitimately allow our character to even start aspects of changing, aspects of growing, aspects of action, aspects of trying to maintain that change and then relapse. There's a lot of wonderful opportunities that this show is starting to hit on that I'm excited to see where it goes. And in case people are like, yeah, well, you're only using theoreticals. Uh, Erickson's developmental stages. We look at this and we can have a bigger understanding of the fact that like, Hachiman and all of these characters are hitting different developmental milestones that they need to go ahead and understand whether that's identifying you know whether to be to make social relationships or not or whether to go ahead and start finding out who they are and where they're going this show is jam-packed with a lot of beautiful opportunities to explore the human psyche to explore what it means to connect to explore what it means to go ahead and make friendships and you know it and grow as an individual and hold this mirror up to society and ourselves and question aspects about ourselves would you call this a, a romance actually you, you guys might find this weird i would call this a slice of life because a majority of this is grounded in a lot of realism more so than like the oh stereotypical i'm i'm so into you like romance aspect of it right it's more focusing on the relationships between the characters and the than the romance is there comedy yeah but there's comedy in real life and there's serious moments in real life anyway i'm gonna say it just because i i feel like i need to say it i usually hate saying this but i i, I feel like we might need a little bit of a comedy episode we might need a fucking beach episode someday soon brother i want to give out points like no tomorrow <laughs> I want to I wanna give out points like no tomorrow, brother. Romance is the last boss. Anyway, that's what the OVA is for. Uh, can y'all imagine Sensei in a bikini? Or anyone? <laughs> Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, not soon. <laughs> anyway. I wish that was me. You've been veg. Is that a tank top? That's a tank top, right, brother? Why is Saika like this? Actual question for you guys. Like, it, and I don't fully know or understand, or maybe it's going to be explained in the future. Why is she, or why is he so into Hachi? Is it the friendship level? Is there more to it? Does did Hachi man say something? I'm gonna try sitting like that. Hold on. No way, bro. No way. Don't hurt yourself. It hurts the balls. <laughs> You'll break your knees. The balls are in the way. I'm looking at that, bro, and I'm like, holy shit. The way the way they're sitting, I'm like, ooh. Ooh. Oh. 
動とか全然してないでしょ今度テニスしようよおうそのうち適当に連絡くれうんそれじゃあ8万のアドレスあ教えてもらってもいいかな<笑>秘密の式の付き目覚まし時計としか扱っていない俺の携帯にああつかのメールアドレスがえっ8万何泣いてるの試しに送ってみるね I'll text you just to check to see if that's your number. Saika, Saika, Saika. Bro, my fucking heart over here. Also, is anyone kind of sus? Like, is this another tank top on top of the shirt that they're wearing? Like, I would understand, like, a plus, yeah, plus 10 for Saika there, but also, like. Saika, da yo. Hachiman, oh, hi, yo. Hajimete no mail des. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, how many how many would have fallen for Psycho? Actual question, no judgment here. Definitely head pads at least. Wood is a dude. Femboy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I mean for me, if someone's proactive, was that proactive? Yeah, if someone was this proactive, right? Because uh, you have to remember, Psycho's the one that's making all of these attempts. Psycho's the one that's like actively pushing forward, right? You can't convince me that Psycho is a boy. I mean, we haven't seen it, right? We haven't seen it, brother. In an anime. You see、uh, the main character see, sitting in the front seat. What does, that, what does that say about it? About that character? Eagerness? Sure. A leader or inspired one? Very eager, close to the teacher, proactive? Sure. Diligent? Do you see the main character in the back seat looking out at the window, all fucking dramatically, like, like you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> out, out there looking, looking at the window, whatnot. Like, what does that say about that character? The main character energy, sure. As opposed to someone just being in the middle, right? Perv. <laughs> As opposed to someone literally just being in the middle and being what I, I would consider an NPC character, at least in my perspective. I don't know about you guys.、Uh, they don't pick their seating setup. I, IRL, they might not. But you have to remember in an anime, every shot is deliberate, right? And every, like, a character can be placed in any seat or in any environment. For a reason, right? So think about it this way. If they were up front, we've already established that it would be eagerness. If they're in the back, we've already, like, you know, people are saying, like, hey, that would establish them sort of having this MC setup. And, and even IRL, if we're going to be honest about it, what students, and I think I can bring up some studies that represent this, get chosen most often? The people at the front and the people in the end. The people in the middle are usually the ones that can go ahead and blend in into the environment, into the background, right? Unless the author literally rolled the dice. Could be. It could be that as well. I'm done, bro. It's the fucking senseis, bro. It's the fucking. It's, it's the MILFs, brother. It's the Dami Mommies. All it took was slapping down the paper, and I'm already ready to go ahead and put, out, put on my fucking hat, brother. <laughs> it took one fucking second just to be like, oh shit, Sensei's here. Ah.、Uh, Question. We clearly see that like, they're defining their roles, and we already know what the main theme is to try and go ahead and help the kid out. What would you prioritize in a setting like this for yourself? Aside from Hachiman lurking in the dark, which is phenomenal, you have your group of friends, right? You're assigned as a, as a counselor for a bunch of kids. How do you divvy up your time to make sure that all the kids' needs are being met? Do you, spend, do you prioritize your friends that you went with, or do you prioritize your task at hand that's been part, like, pushed onto you? The reason why I ask this is like, we see this, this group of kids that really want to go to help out the children and whatnot. But at the same time, friends, by the way, Ed, if you see Sensei in a swimsuit, what would you do? I would probably bust a nut, l e h a I'm not even. I'm, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But like,、uh, <laughs> I would probably I, I would probably go into a be right back screen and then like come back a minute later, you know?、Um, but realistically,、um, when it comes to an environment like this, it's interesting just to see the power dynamics at play and how they're communicating with one another. Something else I do want to point out, and I, and I do wonder about this, is how much of an influence does the sisters, I guess, pick 
or choice or friendship level with either Yui or Yukino affect Hachiman in general or affect Hachiman's perspective? Because we know that he has cognitive distortions, right? Write it down, write it down. あいてにすんのは宇宙人みたいなもんだし。八万、言い方がひどいよ。ああ。俺にも言い分はあるんだ。小学生の時のキャンプファイヤー。Was so continuous trauma. Let me get a good marker here. Hold on. A bonfire incident being rejected. There's been like four or five different themes that have happened to Hachiman, right? Where it's continuous forms of rejection. And I guess I gotta ask this for you guys. How many of you guys have felt disgusted at yourselves at some point in your life? Either you thought you thought to yourself, you know what? I'm not worthy of this relationship. I am not enough. I am disgusting. Um, you know, you have all of these cognitive distortions and like friends might be with you. And they might be like, oh yeah, you know what? No, you're loved. You're cared for. You're whatever. So I'm telling you guys what I hear you and I feel like that every day. Yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of people don't like it. For example, if you were to come to a psychologist office or a therapist office, they came to mind. The first question is like, hey, when did this first start? A lot of people would be like, oh, you know what? I had one traumatic incident. But all these other little micro micro incidents, acute stress incidents, people forget about them, but they matter. Because this is how we start to define ourselves in the early years. Not quite disgusting, but definitely feel unworthy sometimes. Yeah. And it, and it comes from a history of like little incidents building up over time. Little instances where like say that you were in a group, right? And the group excluded you and made you feel unworthy. And you might not have registered that as trauma. You might have been like, you know what? I'm going to go play with myself or go do, that sounded wrong, but go do whatever you needed to do, right? And it's like one little incident that made you feel not good. And guess what? It keeps building on. It kept building on and building on and building on. And then you might have gotten in a toxic relationship where all of a sudden they made you feel like they weren't enough. Or maybe, maybe they made you feel so dependent on them that when they left, it just fucking crushed you. Right? Because all of a sudden it's like, am I enough if I couldn't even keep the person that thought I was enough? Right? There's 101 things out there in the world that genuinely, continually can keep this building up. However, this brings up a perfect perspective of this. These are cognitive distortions, my friends. I never felt like that, but after a few relationships, I definitely did. Yeah, unfortunately, like, and that's the thing is a lot of people aren't taught how to have healthy relationships, right? Or healthy communication in relationships to not hurt the other person. But looking at this, how many of you can identify or can point out some of the cognitive distortions that you have? I'll be honest, I have polarized thinking, even as a psychologist. I'm still taking some classes and doing some like extra, like, you know, continuing education credits and stuff like that. If I don't get an A, if, if, if my grade drops to a, like a B plus, guess what? I feel like a fucking failure. I feel like I'm doing something wrong. I feel like I'm not successful. I feel like I completely failed at what I'm intending to do. Some of us have some cognitive distortions that like we go through on the day by day basis and we filter life through this. Now, is this bad inherently? No, right? But is it important to be aware of like how we're filtering information and how we're like, we sometimes present this information out to others? A hundred percent. So looking at any of the characters that you know in anime, Especially here, Hachiman. What cognitive distortions has he presented so far? How oh, my dad tell me how much I'm I'm failing every day. I think mainly only one, but that's only because it's on its own is enough. Yeah, and it can be enough. Here's the thing, and I, and I think this is a big one. Have you ever felt like a burden to people, even though they've told you that you're not? Even though people genuinely care about you and they're proud of you and they love you. And how do you deal with those symptoms, right? Or how do you deal with those feelings? Because dealing with them is is, is the big aspect. Hachiman is distorting his his literal worldview through these lens. And it's just making it all filtered through that lens. Oh yeah, no, I, 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 I'm not going to be enough. I'm not going to do this. I have all this trauma that's affected me, but relationships are fake. I wanted to connect with people, but I'm not worthy of connection, even though I really want to connect with people and all relationships are fake and superficial. So you have this like dichotomy, these two different ideas within him. One is sort of like hopeful version of him trying to connect while the other one is sort of that version of him that's been hurt that's like the defense mechanism that comes out would be annoying to them yeah the, absolutely lord that's another major one when i go through mental breakdowns like while well, being overwhelmed mayan if you don't mind me asking uh for you 
No, Lena, please don't. I, you guys are never a burden to me. And I hope you guys know this. Like whenever you guys chat and whatnot, you guys tell your stories. I appreciate that. My question or my, my aspect of throwing it out there for you guys is, for example, Mayan, for yourself, have you ever seen a therapist or like worked with like coping skills or in any, any in that regard? Because I'm super curious, like, you know, because even myself, right? Whenever I go into a crisis mode or something like that, I need to like find ways to go ahead and ground myself to be okay. Right. And I don't know about the rest of you, but whenever you've had a crisis moment, how do you center yourself to be able to keep going forward and go past whatever may be hurting you or whatever may be stalling you there? And also, thank you guys so much for being vulnerable. I appreciate that. And I think it's important to have these conversations as it relates to these characters for personal growth and for understanding the scene. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't have when I take several deep breaths and try to walk, but I think it only makes things worse. Here's something like an everyday trick before jumping right back into it. I'll back it up. That might that might help. A lot of people always seem to ignore our senses. What is your favorite scent in the scent in the world? And if you can find the candle of it or something to keep it plugged in to keep it relaxed. It's a good way of ensuring your brain is able to go and maintain just a level of calmness so you don't spike up as high as often. So, for example, here in my office, I have a candle or a little thing going that helps me stay focused and alert. But if I were to go into my bedroom, right, I have like a cinnamon, like spice cinnamon that makes me go to sleep. Vanilla spice cinnamon that makes me go to sleep almost instantly. Right. So depend, you can use your sense towards your advantage to be able to go in and like keep yourself awake, alert or whatever a mood that you need that gets you more relaxed. What's up, Jay? Well, how you doing? Appreciate you stopping on by. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're practicing that self-care. Hot dog scented candles. I don't know about that, brother. I don't know about that. Anyway, yeah. which does bring up the aspect, right? I thought the bonfire celebration was done at like a prom type of a thing. So brings in my question. If you guys did go to a high school dance or anything like that, how many of you guys went with the partner versus how many of you guys went with the friend or by yourselves, if at that, maybe kind of for elementary. Some some middle schools do it as well as just like a dance type thing. It just depends on where you go. You went solo. How was that? Like if you've gone solo or you've gone with friends or a partner, how is that? Because technically it's a developmental milestone for some people. And I know a lot of people, thanks to COVID, did not meet that mi developmental milestone of like going out with friends or having that special day that's dedicated for you and your friends to celebrate whatever, right? I danced with all the girls I had a crush on. Damn, touch me. N meanwhile, I'm over here like, oh, I'm fucking failing now that I have like, you know, someone that I had a crush on. Oh, geez. Oh, boy. Uh, I, I totally know all, all the ways to go ahead and talk to people. But when it comes to this one person, I'm over here like Morty. Oh, oh, geez. You know, like it, it, it just depends. At my high school prom, they made a girl dance with me who didn't want. Oh, at my school when I left 16, which is normal in the UK, me and my friends didn't want to go because we'd rather have our own party with booze. After a while, we <laughs> get crashed at prom. And it was pretty fun. That sounds like a blast, Nat. I'm not going to lie. That sounds like an absolute blast to so just go ahead and go through. Yeah, then I developed anxiety. Fair. Fair. <laughs> oh god sometimes you gotta play jenga alone i mean <laughs> school dance means free food for me and i can't dance dude free food is amazing i i, I like free food i can i can dance like i'm and that's not me bragging like i can dance but if I, that's only if I want to dance, right? And I think that's a big thing because oftentimes there's expectations of like, you're going to dance every time. And I'm like, nah, bro, give me some salsa, some bachata, some uh, cumbia, some like any type of a Hispanic like form of dancing and pop more than likely got it, right? But like, you want me to go ahead and do some like country line dancing? Nah, fam, I'm sorry. I, I never studied that. I, I learned like some of the classics vaults and stuff. See 
Yeah. I think it's just, it's nice to go out, go, go out, keep your mind off stuff, especially work or school or whatnot. Take little vacations. I almost drank and I almost spat my water. Oh boy. That was so close, boys. That was so close. <laughs> That would have got everywhere, brother. That would have got everywhere. Holy shit. Almost a beach episode. <laughs> Adorable, though. Adorable. Okay, my question, though, is this. How many points would you give each one? Like, what what style, style of swimwear do you prefer more, more right? <laughs> Whistle noises? It's adorable, but also, let's see where this goes. I'm kind of scared, not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> Rudy coming in with the fucking camera angle here. Rudy, why do you... <laughs> why would you even show your brother this shot? Why would you even... Why would you even be like, Hey, uh, Oni-chan, Oni-chan, hold on, hold on. Oni-chan, Oni-chan. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> Why would you? <laughs> Why would you even come in through with that shot, brother? Both of them are perfect <laughs> for free. Oh, dude, that's something else. Now I'm not. Now I'm back to questioning their relationship status. Hey, yo, pink underwear. <gasps> How'd you know? Oh my god, pink underwear. Ooh, yeah. There's two years younger than Hickey around four, right? <laughs> What's hilarious though? Dude, what what I would find funny is like. You know, we're watching this show, and all of a sudden, the, our FBI agent on the other side is like, <laughs> <laughs> "Our FBI agent is just." <laughs> uh, th that's the key thing. There is like that they're able to go ahead and talk to one another, right? And the fact that these relationships, uh, and that the sister is trying to go ahead and provoke some of these relationships to go further, leaving them alone to go ahead and find the gift. Her playing with Dewey and then doing instances like this show a couple. I don't know. For me, I'm sort of like wondering about the sister. What are her true intentions? <laughs> How do you even go? Okay, okay. I'm. I'm uh... <laughs> <laughs> We're real big brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I feel like we need an eye tracker in here, man. I'm not going to lie to you. I feel like we need an eye tracker for some of these scenes, brother. I feel like you guys need to know how decent of an individual I am. Like, think about it this way. So we have Hachiman and the sister overlapping and sharing very similar ideologies, right? And I think this is a big aspect of this. Is Hachiman, if we're looking at Brock from Brenner's ecological theories, mm. is in a way sharing a similar group of friends and they have interlapping aspects of, of, of self, right? They have interlapping aspects as to like how their impacts with one another can ripple through and affect Hachiman and how their, their impact can ripple through and affect the sister. Super duper interesting. That looks rather saucy. Okay, Ed is overthinking too much. No, look, this is this is what I'm pointing out. This is what I'm talking. I'm talking about this. I'm talking about this. I'm talking about this. <laughs> I'm talking about this. You dirty-minded individuals. Ah. <laughs> It's essentially the way that we impact in and we impact out, right? Like, how does our actions start impacting the others around us? So that's why I'm saying is if we do this both for Hachiman and for his sister, there's a commonality in the friend group or in the group that they're able to go ahead and, and overlap. They overlap in the microsystem or mesosystem with friends, right? So if the sister does something to piss off Yukino, what is that going to go ahead and do? Does that have a direct impact on him? Yeah. It probably does, but it but it probably goes further than that, right? It probably goes further into him taking it home, all of a sudden his home life being a little turbulent, and so on and so forth. It comes into the question, which is, when it comes to even an environment like this, right? Even when it comes to, like, the shows that we're watching, right? 
Yeah, this is this is the kink list long that we analyze in Gushing Magical Girl. For these anime characters, and especially if you're into anime characters, would you classify that as a kink? I think uh, it's a checklist. It's it's what you like what you, you for yourself or for others, right? <clears throat> because at the end of the day, it's all about bringing that positivity towards what you like and what you don't like, right? I.e., like you're being into like either anime, uh, specifically anime characters, girls, uh, anime girls, uh, what, what you would call like everything asphyxiated with hentai, doujins, or so on. And, and even further, right? Because apparently there's specialized, and, and I hate to bring this up in an order to guide discussion, but it's important to go ahead and talk about in this environment as well, because we're clearly seeing an, an advancement in this. There's a more and more representation of items, tools, toys being made with sort of like a 2D, 3D character in mind, right? So that's sort of what I want to go ahead and highlight with that is there's a, I think there's going to be a lot more things being added to the kink list as it keeps growing because of that. When it comes to Oregairu and specifically, for example, how many of you were like, hey, you know what? For her to come to Yui, the best. And I'm actually super vanilla despite what my book suggests. I actually just like normal sex with a bit of passion. Sure, Nat. Sure. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I think that like, what most people would label as vanilla is we probably mix them with a lot of other like keywords in there, you know? Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and continue guys. It is the universal law of boobs. <laughs> what can, what can we say? Right? <laughs> the wordplay. I'm sorry, chap. <laughs> sorry, chat. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> Oh, I told you guys I had a fucking, oh, I told you I had a fucking, uh, <laughs> oh, no, brother. Oh, no. <laughs> the, damn, the jacket is off. <laughs> fucking talking. <laughs> Holy shit, boys. Shit, brother. I'm going to take some water. I need. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I already you already predicted this bro i did not expect the fucking teacher to come through with this holy shit brother how is she still single oh, wait a minute all right we're, we're in a better world now we're in a much better world now now we can now we can analyze appropriately something's wrong in the world if she's single god damn <laughs> <laughs> you know sometimes in life it's okay to be wrong sometimes in life it's okay to be silly and sometimes in life it's okay to thirst and i think that this might be one of those times brother <laughs> uh he has more outfit changes than my avatar <laughs> he's truly a pro welcome you you're you're watching predator pred at work right oh god she's too good for all men I'm giving okay are y'all okay I'm giving sensei a plus 10 I'm giving sensei a fucking plus 10 for that everyone else gets a plus 3 I, I, I don't I'm, mm. are y'all okay with that I hope y'all are okay with that because uh yeah ma <laughs> Yeah. Sure. Mm. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Actually, genuine question though. 
And, and by this, I, I do mean this as a form of exploration because oftentimes I see this being brought up like time and time again in a lot of animes and a lot of video games and even shows, right? Where it's like, oh yeah, the power of big booba. But how many of you guys actually prefer smaller boobs, right? Shape and balance over size, right? Or just all boobs in general? Because sadly, and weirdly enough, like a lot of individuals tend to go ahead and push this out like a, oh, you don't you don't have any boobs. That's a bad thing. Bro, flat as a board, I'll still fucking enjoy it. And big as a, well, no, I'm afraid of extremely big boobs. But still, like bigger, sure, I'll enjoy it too, right? Don't care about boobs, sure. Hand-sized bliz. <laughs> See, I think the double D is fine. I'm talking about like those like 4D, like getting into like a, uh, the, the cowgirls from, um, what's it called? From interspecies reviewers. Like, I, I have a fundamental fear of being suffocated at that point. If it's like, if it's getting to that point, you know, a K cup. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> and if you do have big boobs or in general, right, what sort of an impact does it have on you physically? Because a lot of times what I've heard is it has an impact specifically on your back, right? And it makes it like a little bit uncomfortable for some people. I don't really prefer small boobs per se, but I have a history of falling for flatter women. I like more shape and proportionality. Sure. I mean, for some people, that's that's absolutely true, brother. I like hito, Hitonami, yeah. Suffocated by boobs. Well, <laughs> well, when I'll be in my... Oh, no. <laughs> what did I walk back into? <laughs> Well, we know. Welcome back. But also, hi. <laughs> we were talking about boobs. We are talking about specifically like the fear of the booba, right? Or well, how much booba is too much booba? Or what booba are you okay with in general? Even on guys, guys, because I hate to put it this way. There are a lot of, I'm going to put it this way. There are a lot of people out there who seem to not think that like, hey, guys, boobas affects them. But guys, boobas affects them as well, right? Cultural topics. Gushing over magical girls, apparently. <coughs> Sus. No, Fuffy. Aww. 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 <laughs> あの、Careful. All right, guys. We're going to be real here for a second, right? I know we've talked about the interactions with kids, especially when doing any form of therapy or when kids need advice and whatnot. There's an actual moment of... There's a fine line, uh, especially with children, because you have to remember they're going through their developmental milestone. You have to walk between like what is advice and what is reinforcing their thought patterns. Because children are very perceptive and very uh, like can be very easily influenced by what you say. So this is why like as an entertainer, as a creator, as whatever, like, for example, I always state this. This is not a replacement for therapy. Yes, I am a mental health expert. Yes, I I do. I am a psychologist for people. However, I am not your psychologist, right? Seek a mental health expert in your area to help you, right? Because they'll be able to go ahead and understand you and give you the best advice and reinforcements that you need for that, right? However, when it comes to kids specifically, we have to be aware that like for kids, they may latch on to one thing you say and that might become their mentality. <laughs> それは好きだけでしょ私も会ってないわ。<笑><笑> <laughs> And unfortunately, that's just a way of life. And I think that's that's worthy of talking about as well. As you get older, your your availability of the pool of friends goes down, even though we have an easier form of connection to the world outside. Isn't that a scary thought? 
our availability and our time to be able to like actually make friends outside of our area gets bigger and bigger as we get older because we have the power and the resources to go ahead and connect with people all over the world. But yet our actual ability to connect with friends starts to dwindle and get smaller and smaller. So if I were to ask you guys this, right? How old are you guys? And how many genuine friends do you have? Like IRL friends. Now, I'm not talking about Discord friends, but how many IRL friends do you have? My Discord friends became IRL friends. Now, comparatively to when you were younger, how many friends did you have back then? Because I'm seeing nothing really break five. Was it? Did you have more friends back in the day? I'm still friends with my friends from school. We message each other from time to time, but we have all moved away. So it's just like hard to keep around the same time. Yeah. And, and that's, that's the big difference is like, as you get older and whatnot, it gets harder and harder to maintain uh, a friendship and be able to go and like evolve that friendship, which is why it becomes more considerate or like there's so much pressure if you're in high school and college to make memories. I I'm sure all of you guys have heard this. Make memories. Oh, you, you should be thriving right now. <clears throat> this is where you peak. I've heard I've heard some parents tell this to their kids in counseling. And I'm like, no, what the fuck are you talking about? Because I've had to move one or two years off. Oh, well, that's what I'm more ter terrified about right now. My main thing through this is this. The old ways of thinking about like what peak it, peaking is, is only determined by you and where you give up. We have quarter life crisis. We have a midlife crisis and we even have a late, late stage crisis, right? You can have multiple areas of growing and evolving and literally finding what peak is for you in that scenario. But it's up to you to be able to go ahead and say, you know what, like high school doesn't define who I am today. College does not define who you are today. Yesterday does not define the person that you may be right now. How many of you guys go through like a, one would call imposter syndrome? And have you dealt with imposter syndrome in the past? Or is this something that has come up rather new? And this is very specific because for a lot of you guys, you might be like, oh, you guys might just sit there and talk about like, you know, the mental health aspects of some, something through this. So for example, like an Oda Gaidu, uh, like in the way that he's referencing friendship through this. But imposter syndrome comes in at any point. At the moment that you're creating something, you might not feel like you're doing enough or like you are worthy enough. Or like people might just move on or like, you know, so on and so forth. What approach would you take that is different than Hachiman right now? In the here and now, we've seen how Hachiman is approaching the kid now. She's opening up to him. He's not the one that's seeking her out. She's seeking him out. What advice would you give this kid or your younger self? What genuine advice do you wish you would have heard when you were younger that would have helped you made you a better person today? I don't know. Did you just need a hug? Some people just need hugs. Some people just need a good head pat and being told that they're be, that they're proud of them, right? Uh, can you remind me what imp imposter syndrome is essentially believing like you're not enough, right? Or like that your work will never be enough or so on and so forth. Uh, it, can, it can grow out of proportion, um, especially as you create a lot of content or pieces of work or whatnot uh, due to it. I've never had imposter syndrome as an IT consultant in my old career. But yeah, as a writer and a content creator, I really do have... I just have the audience. I have out, out of luck. Yeah. Yeah. It takes time. You can't be the best at everything. All little achievements and whatnot. Oh, self-love and forgiveness. I love that. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> <laughs> But Hachiman, 1% of 6 billion or 7 billion people is still a lot of fucking people. Yes, don't get me wrong, it proves the point. But at the same time, it like if we were to ask you, like, what is a, a thought pattern that you have of yourself that you carry it through and that that is something that you believe? I'm not worthy. <coughs> I'm not enough. I will never be loved, so on and so forth. Here's a good, like, and here's a, a, a cognitive behavioral technique in bingo to whoever you wanted to go ahead and use that, right? To go ahead and think about, to use as a form of motivational interviewing, to get people to take the next step and not just thank them there. Catastrophication. So what would that look like? If you have to start this with an I am statement, what would that, what would that say? A lot of people will go ahead and take some, a statement like that, right? And I'll, I'll use, I guess I'll just, I'll quickly push on, right? Which is like, I am a freak. Not that you are, but just imagine this, right? Boom. On a scale of zero <coughs> and 10, zero being the absolute worst. I jump to the worst conclusions. 
Zero being the worst, 10 being like you're totally a master at it. Where are you at? For some people, they might be like, you know what? And I, I'm going to continue on with, with just, just the example, just for, for pressing, right? Let's say that I was like, hey, you know what? I'm a four. Uh, I jumped to conclusions. But you know what? I've seen, the, like, I had a friend that literally jumped to the worst conclusions possible all the times, and he was always anxious, and he was, like, around a two. I had my brother over here always has a great way of doing things. I see my dad that, like, he's okay from time to time. I see this person, this person, this person, this person, this person. You have a person put it all out on the timeline. The more that you start going through it, the more that you might be like, okay, if you start it off in a four, are you truly in a four considering all these people that you lifted behind here? Or are you closer to a five considering that person? Allow the person an opportunity to think about, are they closer this way or are they closer the other way? And even then, now you go like this. What would it take? For you to go from a four or a five, what would it take for you to take that next step? What would it take for me to go from, you know what? I am, I, I, I jump to conclusions at the worst times and I'm at a four to be like, hey, you know what? I'm at a five. I think I'm at a decent five. Sure. And if you're a four, what would it take for you to be at the five? So you, I know it sounds silly and I, and I know it sounds silly and I, I, I have to draw it out this way in order for you guys to understand what I'm talking about. But if you do this with someone, with anyone, Right, and, and a good therapist will do this with you. A good psychologist will go over cognitive behavioral therapy with you to touch on like, hey, there is room for improvement. We can think, I don't think anybody thinks in numerical. <laughs> no, but you have to think about like, and, and this is the aspect of whoever the professional is to help you think about it in a way that makes sense for you to take that next step up. For example, if you, you're having, you think that you're the worst and you're like, hey, you know what? Looking at that, I thought I was a three, but I'm a... You're like, I think I'm a five. It's like, okay, then what would it take for you to go from feeling like a five to feeling like a six? You know what? Maybe having better days. Maybe spending time with friends. Maybe caring more about myself. You start getting to the root cause a lot easier, a lot quicker. そう。<laughs> Oh. それに仕方されると自分が一番下なんだなって感じる。ああ。嫌だな。いじめっぽい。でも、もっと仕様もないし、なぜ私見捨てちゃったし、もう仲良くできない。Right. <笑>ああ、<笑> Kids can be vicious. If you if you've ever dealt with kids or you ever worked with kids, kids can be pretty fucking vicious. They can le legitimately tell you stuff unfiltered, um, and when they filter, then you start wondering why. Um, so seeing that the fact that they're already interacting with one another, they're already at putting aspects of shame in place. Ooh, that would destroy me. Monday. Oh,答え。After watching Cushing, I can't take this costly. <laughs> <laughs> After watching gushing, I can't take this. Uh... Oh, bro. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Adorable. No, it's scary. Hmm. 
Adorable. <laughs> Adorable. え、<笑><笑><笑> She has succubus? Who the fuck left a succubus outfit for Yui? Who in the wait, 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 wait. <laughs> who who thought, hey, you know what? We're gonna leave a succubus outfit for a bunch of high schoolers to scare elementary school kids. <laughs> oh no, someone who knew. <laughs> そしてでも似合ってなかったらはっきり言うし、すげえ馬鹿にしてるところだったんだけどな。そうできなくて残念だ。え、へへ。素直に褒めればいいのに、バカ。兄ちゃんはひねでれてるな。だそうこう作る。
You know, you know what this would be considered as, right? Y'all, y'all know what what this would. Yeah, I'm about to go fucking super saiyan, bro. I'm about to fucking blow my fucking top here, dude. It's better to treat this separately in a healthier environment out in the open than it is targeting them in a dark, you know, forest where they're supposed to be scared. And you guys are oh fuck me. あんたら調子乗ってんじゃないの別にアシラあんたらの友達じゃないんだけど。つうかさ、さっき超馬鹿にしてたやついるよね。あれ言ったの誰誰が言ったか聞いてんの舐めてんのかあ、おい。やっち
And by the way, this did like what you're saying is is an aspect of kind of like dark psychology, which is like you can use some of the concepts learned for like negative impacts, which you should never do, right? But what what has he just done in here? He's breaking them down. He's literally breaking them down for a kid. His mentality doesn't separate the fact that they're going through developmental milestones. So for example, if we were to do this right now, boom, these are what? I school age. How can I be good? Right? Success leads to a feeling of competency, feeling of whatever. This is sort of where they're at. Three to six to eleven, twelve to eighteen, whatever, right? This is stuff that you should be targeting with the teacher, having a conversation over, bringing them up to be, because the moment that you break this down, congratulations, you're gonna give someone anxiety that might like might not dwell up immediately, but it might pop up with issues later on in their life. You might see issues later on in their life and trying to form trusting relationships. And not only that, talking about trusting relationships, what does that do? Putting them in a fight or flight state, are they going to have secure attachments? As a kid, you just saw that by you thinking you had uh, secure attachments led to this outcome. Are you going to have secure attachments going forward? Or are you more than likely going to start developing other forms of like anxious avoidant attachments? More than likely. Because guess what? We don't have to attach because we're healthily attached. No, I have to attach you because we're safe. You're safe. We're safe. And if we work as a team, we'll be fine. We'll be fine if we work as a team, right? It's not like if people bully us, we won't give each other out, right? It, it, it works in a way that can truly like mess up a kid's distortion. If it was an adult, it's like, you know what? They're rationally thinking or there's other aspects of things to touch on. But kids are some of the most impressionable individuals that hitting on them or going through it with a tactic like this it'll alleviate the symptoms that you might see a trauma bond happening, but it's not a secure attachment and it is not something worth healthy that may go, keep going forward, you know? Right. Right. なんてのはそのゴミみたいな冷淡で残酷な世界に順応して負けを認めて冷属する行為だ and here's where the issue comes in as well i know he's playing god but here's where the issue in, in hachiman's thinking comes in as well he's being very selfish his cognitive distortions are allowing him to play god and put him place himself as a villain for others as well what about the other kids and i know you guys might be oh they're bullying them why we've heard her perspective we know their perspective on it, but we don't know the kid's perspective on it. Isn't that interesting? And, and, and that's exactly it, YOLO. It, it, it's coming into a situation where it's like, we're not going to get the full picture of it. When I saw it first time, I was so fascinated by his method. It, it's it, it's like a fear, a fear project and projecting himself onto Rumi and like what he would have done to save himself in that regard without taking into consideration the full picture. And in aspects like this, when you don't have a full picture, you end up hurting everyone. And, and yes, it might solve itself for a little bit. Like they might be happy. They might, at the end, they might like, I don't know, get on the bus together and be like, wow, that was truly scary and whatnot. But still, that that's still presented in there, you know? Brute force method. <laughs> Yeah, one of them. Okay, so let's go. No. They're kids. They're kids. They they won't know how to fucking deal with that. You know. They're expecting these kids to act like adults. They're kids. That's the major issue with all of this. And it is. It's it's like literally like optimism versus pessimism. Uh, but both of them are making the wrong assumption and thinking that they're they're gonna deal with this situation like adults. Man, this is heavy. It is heavy. It's a, really interesting though. <laughs> Well, what's funny is, Jake to Jack, uh, Bulby is act because I'm an attachment psychologist, right? Or like one of my areas of special, like it's health and wellness and attachment that is like my areas of specialty. It, it's so good. So Bulby, I actually studied under someone that he like mentored or he was like the mentor of 
Uh, when I studied abroad, I actually studied under that person. Incredible individual, learned 101 things of that. So yeah, attachment styles are very, very important to touch on, you know? Yep. Even though they're playing the role, we know they're playing the role. These lines, specifically, when dealing with kids, last time we talked about it, you don't talk to kids and be like, can you keep a promise? Can you keep a secret? You know, the secret stays between us. You know what will happen if you tattle, right? Think about the aspects that for this group of kids particularly is being cemented on as it keeps going that's why i'm saying like even though they even though right now they, they don't actually mean this they're they're playing and whatnot for these kids this is probably gonna get cemented and later on in life when they're older they're gonna be like wait why don't i trust other people why don't i why, why am i not able to go ahead and like you know fully divulge out even if they get a debriefing this is why kids is a specialized population the studies for kids have to go through like a lot of like internal revol like review boards and make sure that it's a safe environment to do the testing and that everyone's aware of the risk, right? They're taking it too far. Yeah. <laughs> Oof. あと一人。十、九、八。あとは何ちゃってドッキリでした後出ていけばそれでオーケーだ。待って。頑張ったよ。あれ？あ、四、三、二、一。あの。こっち。急いで。ちょ、目が。<笑><笑> And they get fucking flashbang. 360, don't go. <laughs> <laughs> ah, a teenager's biggest enemy. The light. Ah. <laughs> Think fast, chicken nuggets. Oh, Ruby really saved it. Now she has legal evidence. Oh, oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Thank God for Solar Flare. That's so good, man. Wow. See, Sensei, I would have been eating his ass out. That sounds horrible. I would have been chewing his ass out. I would have been like, uh, Hachima. I said it wrong. I said it wrong. Okay, I said it wrong. I would have been chewing his ass out. Like, dude, what the fuck? They're kids. They're kids. We would have been in a fuckload of trouble. Camp would have been canceled. What? What have you done? Camp would have been canceled. Like I would have had parents on the line. Fluffy, please no. No, I didn't think you'd still be here. <laughs> that moment when you have a fucking Freudian slip. Holy shit, man. Oh, you'd be a Jew. Yeah, like le legitimately. Th these are aspects that you would have to go ahead and have this conversation with them on. Like, don't do that again. Like, and, and I, I'm afraid of it, right? I'm afraid that Hachiman is in the future going to take on a lot of issues. Yeah, this is going to turn into a nightmare. Uh, and maybe even, like, make himself a martyr in a lot of situations. If this is the length that he's willing to go for a person that he barely even knew, imagine what he's willing to do for others in a scary way. I can totally see him going full-on fucking Lelouch and, like, turning other people against him just so that other people can be okay. And that, that's that's kind of fucked up. You know? Oh, 
方法は最低でしたけどねそうだな、うん、君は最低だなぜ俺の人格違反方法の話じゃねえのかよそんな方法を思いつく時点で最低だよだが最低にいるからこそどん底に落ちた人間に寄り添えるのかもしれないそういう資質は貴重だ嫌な褒められ方だダーンブラザー報われないわねダーンブラザー別にいいことは何もしてないからな徒党を組んでいた相手がいなくなるだけで随分と楽になるものよたとえ手段は最低でもお膳立てをしたのは引きが焼くんよだから誰からも褒められなくても一つくらいいいことがあっても許されると思うわ、うん、<笑>お待たせはい。And it's not even like, like, you know, coincidentally, but on purpose. How would you feel in that environment? And, and this is like legitimately taking in the, the aspect of self and expanding on it, right? Because it's like, even if some good does come out of it, sure, but for how long before the relapse happens? Because if that change was not initiated by you, by the person, Will that change sick? And even if that person, if that change is initiated by that person, guess what? Relapse happens. I, I'm like, oof, oof. Hachima, Hachima needs therapy. Hachima needs major fucking therapy. We need to get it. We need to get him. We need to book him. We need to get him. We, it's time for us to go ahead and do like a how to treat Hachiman's perspectives, you know, his diagnosis and what that all could be. Because, oof, oof. Hard to commit something in the inside. We need to fix him, chat. We need to fix him. <laughs> ただ。うん。昔のことを思い出した。似たような光景を前にして何もしなかったことを。だ。もし引田に君が俺と同じ小学校だったらどうなってたかな。お前の学校にぼっちが <笑> Oh. <laughs> Jordan, yeah. He said his name. I know, finally. Which comes in the aspect that now that they're identifying him for who he is, it, and by the way, this is not me shitting on the anime because this is real. If you take this as real, do ki high school kids know the best interventions possible? No. A lot of college individuals don't even know people in college and even adults, full on adults, don't even know the best interventions out there. This is why I love the show. And this is what makes it fucking real. Like, yes, we're pointing out like, oh, we would have done this or that or like the impacts that this can have on people. But this is you have to remember they're high schoolers. They're prone to make mistakes, right? Oof. Oof. Wait, 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 hold on. <laughs> hold on. Wait a fucking minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. Was Yukino also fucking... Uh, is there a parataxic distortion here as well? The, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Is this the car? Is it, wait, wait, wait. Did, wasn't there a fancy-ass fucking car that, like, ran over the dog and shit? Wait, 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 wait. Wait. Because if that's the case, 
is Yukino no better than fucking Yui in that situation? <laughs> Sorry, I'm freaking the fuck out. I'm freaking the fuck out here because all of a sudden, wait, almost hit the, the crash statement. Right, right. Oh, fuck. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, fuck, bro. It took one fucking second. One shot. It took one shot. One opportunity. Oh, you guys didn't see her, but I did, and I'm happy. Best girl. Best girl. I don't even care, brother. I, I don't even care. I don't even care. God damn, bro. God damn. <gasps> お姉ちゃん心配で迎えに来ちゃった。お、引き子よくんだ。デートって。あの、元気嫌がってますから。ああ。ああ。引き子よくんの彼女。違います。クラスメイトの結衣が浜結衣です。クラスメイト。はい。
yeah, like looking at it at an aspect like this, like, yeah, you know what? Fuck it. Like I wouldn't have, I wouldn't do that as a professional, but as a teenager, it kind of makes sense. Teenage mind. It's like, Hey, you know what? This will get it done. And that's the main thing through that. It's like looking at a story that can elicit emotions, genuine emotions out of you and like start up good discussions. That's how you know it's a good show. If a show can start up some good discussions, keep you interested and make you feel all kinds of things. That's what's a fucking amazing. Oh man. I, I I'm so fucking, I'm, I'm excited to see what the end of this season is like. And I hope that there's enough people that are really, really interested in this for season two or season three. I hope that, like, thank you guys so much for those of you guys that have appeared. And let me know, guys, if you guys would be interested in a season two uh, follow-through watch or season three follow-through watch um, as we get closer to the end. I'll ask it again when we reach episode 13 or whatever, or 12 or 13, um, just to gauge it. But I hope that you guys would be interested in, like, doing something like that. I'll put it up for a poll or something because... I'm like, holy shit, season one, people were telling me that season one was slow or was kind of rough, but I'm loving it. Like, I don't know if you guys get it or if you guys feel the excitement that I feel whenever start, we're starting an episode, but it's so fucking good. Like, this sh show in general might be one of my LRs. Like, it might fucking be reaching, like, my legendary rare status that I only give a couple shows, you know? Well, thank you guys so much. If you're on YouTube, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Tell me if I'm right, wrong, whatever you guys thought, whatever you guys felt throughout this episode. Uh, help me out because it helps out the algorithm a ton. Uh, and we'll see you guys next time. Come and join us every Friday and possibly Sunday. We'll be doing an episode of Odegaidu just to go ahead and uh, knock it out and get through season one. Appreciate you guys. I'll see you guys later on YouTube.